In this section called Hess's Law, we are going to look at uh, how to add a whole bunch of equations together to come up with a delta H value. This is generally maybe a little easier section than the last couple because there's no real calculations. You're just sort of manipulating equations. So uh, the basis for the calculating enthalpies, we've got Hess's Law. And it says the overall enthalpy change in a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of the individual steps. So we're going to have individual equations. We're going to know our final destination. And we're going to need to manipulate those individual equations to come up with a final answer. So this means that the energy difference between reactants and products is independent of the route taken to get from one to the other. Independent route. Let's talk a little bit about that here. So this is uh, supposed to represent a mountain. We have a mountain climber who's going up and down the mountain, and we have a miner who is going under the mountain. And uh, they both start here, and they both end here. Well, they both end, if you add up all the numbers, at minus 137 kilojoules. That's an exothermic process. Heat has been given off. The bottom line is, regardless of the route that is taken, they end up uh, with the same energy output. So it doesn't matter of the route, it just matters where you end up. And to further that, if there's a start and a finish line, you could take the short way there, or you could take the really long way there that kind of looks like a thumbnail. And this is what is known as a state function. If you watched the crash course video before this one, you would have uh, seen them talk about a path independent and a state function. And both lines are accomplishing the same thing. Uh, the net result is the same. And that is what we care about, the net result. So if you know the reaction enthalpies of the individual steps in an overall reaction, you can calculate the overall enthalpies without having to measure it experimentally. No calculations, just manipulation of values. So for Hess's law, essentially what we're going to do is our delta H target is going to be equal to the individual sums of these steps. And there could be multiple steps. That's fine. We're just going to add them all up in the end. And again, there's some are negative, some are positive. So be wary of that. And sometimes we're going to divide some of the numbers or multiply. So this is a nice straight example here. So this is an equation where carbon dioxide is created from carbon and oxygen. So this is like our final final equation, if you will. So how do we get to the final one? Well, there are two steps. The first step, you'll notice these are not the same equations here. The first step, we we're taking carbon, half a mole of oxygen, and we're making carbon monoxide. Notice carbon monoxide is not in our final one. And we have a measured delta H value. So that's the first step. The second step, we have the carbon monoxide reacting with another half mole of oxygen, and we're making carbon dioxide, and we have another value here. So this one's nice because it's really just us adding the two equations together. We don't need to manipulate them because you'll notice when you just kind of put all your reactants here and all your products here that the carbon monoxide is actually just a huge energy throughout. And we do end up with the carbon plus the oxygen giving us the carbon dioxide, which is the exact equation that we have above. So what was done with the two uh, enthalpy values is they were simply just added up. And of course, they're negative. So it became negative 393.5 kilojoules. So that's about as easy as they come. There's your final result. Okay, so what happens when it's just not a straightforward thing? So what is the enthalpy change for the formation of two moles of nitrogen monoxide from its elements? So this reaction may be called the target equation. This is where we're headed to. This is like our final equation. We actually have two equations, though, to create it. So again, just taking a quick peek, we've got half a mole of N2, O2, NO2, and then this one as well too. Now, we just can't add this one all up. If you just added this all up, it wouldn't be this equation here, right? Because we'd have two of these NO2s. I mean, right there, it's just not the same. So uh, yeah, and a bunch of other stuff here, what, like three halves oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to have to manipulate both of these equations. Now, there's a couple of legal moves that you can do. So rules to follow. If a chemical change is reversed, then the sign of the delta H changes. What I mean by reverse is you can literally take an equation that looks like this, flip it around so your arrow is going to go in the other direction, and that means that this delta value is going to change. If it was positive, it goes to negative. Negative goes to positive. So you're allowed to flip entire equations around. And two, if the coefficients of a chemical equation are altered by multiplying or dividing by a constant factor, then the values of delta H is also altered. So if you have an equation you need to double, you know, you need to double the things in it, whatever they happen to be, 
then you would also double whatever the given delta H value is. We're gonna use both of these ideas to go ahead and solve this one. So uh, there is our target equation. So let's take a look what we need to do with those two sort of uh, individual step equations to make this thing work out. So first thing we're gonna have to do is it looks like we're gonna have to double both of these equations. Okay, doubling them and also at the same time, it looks like we are flipping this one. So we're doubling both and we are flipping the second equation. Notice that this value has changed to positive because we flipped it. When the reason we flipped it is so that these NO2s are eventually going to cancel out the two NO2s. So let's see what happens with multiplying these two values in. So just looking at this first equation here, we've doubled. So two times a half gives us one mole of N2. We now have two moles of oxygen right there, and we have two of these N2s like that. Now, the second equation we're also doubling, but like I said, we flipped it. And the reason we flipped it is so we can get rid of the NO2s. Again, that's just something you gotta eyeball. You gotta say, okay, I've got NO2s on both sides, both equations, they're not the final one. That means I'm gonna have to flip one of them to get rid of it. So we have doubled there, and we also have two NO2s there and two times a half gives us one mole of oxygen. And let's see how this sort of plays out now. Put your line in, we're just kind of adding everything up. Now there's everything added up, all our reactants, all that stuff is there and all this stuff is here. And now we're gonna cancel things out. So we might as well start with the oxygens. We've got oxygen, oxygen, and the NO2, NO2. And there is our final one. Now, let's keep in mind here that we actually, just to, just to talk about the oxygens here, we had two oxygens here and we had one oxygen here. So we weren't necessarily canceling out all the oxygens. We, of course, had one left over. So our nitrogen and our oxygen and our uh, nitrogen monoxide gas. Now, we haven't really looked at what's happened with these values here. So let's do that on the next slide. So uh, there's the math. We were doubling that, doubling that, ended up adding those together, 180 kilojoules per mole. What does that mean? It means it's it's endothermic because we have a positive value here. And you can always write a final equation. So there's our final equation with our delta H uh, included. We'll take, a one, we'll take a look at one more example here. This one's a little more complicated. Uh, so this is going to be our target equation. We've got solid carbon plus hydrogen gas giving us methane gas. I want to calculate this value here. We've actually got three individual steps to work with for this one. So there's our target equation at the top. And we have our three target equations right there. So now it's kind of worth just sort of eyeballing things and seeing what the deal is. So the first thing I spot with this one is that methane is a product and the only equation methane appears is right there and it's a reactant. So the first thing I think we're going to have to do is flip flop this equation and then that is going to become a positive value. And there we go. So we have flip flopped that equation. These are now the same just reversed and you'll notice that we now have that value right there. So now we're going to deal with the uh, second equation, equation B. If you'll notice with equation B, we uh, need to end up with two moles of hydrogen, but here we only have one mole. So we're going to double the entire equation B. So there is everything doubled. Everything's multiplied by two. And we have also multiplied our enthalpy change by two here. So at this point, we can now rewrite our equations. So there's our first equation, equation A, and it's the same, Hasn't nothing's been done to it. Equation B has been doubled and equation C has been flipped around. So once we've got that uh, all written down, you can just start to cancel out things. So all of our oxygens are gone, two on the left, two on the right. Our carbon dioxides are gone, one on the right, one on the left. And waters are also gone. And that just leaves us with our net here. Uh, if you do mathematics with all of this here, you should end up with a value of that. So it looks like it's going to be an exothermic process because it's a negative value. So Hess's law allows us to add up these equations. We add the reactants products and the delta H values. And we can also show how these steps are added together via an enthalpy diagram. And we've seen these a few times now. 
So here's an exothermic. Your products have uh, less energy in the system. Again, it's all from the system's perspective here. And there's the endothermic. Now your products have more energy in the system. And here's just probably the one that is easiest to draw for your purposes. You've got your reactants, you've got your products, and you've got your enthalpy here. So this value is negative, so this should be an exothermic process. And here's one that is endothermic.